It's a beautiful night for high school football here at Dakota High School in what is now a marquee Mac Red matchup. Hello everybody, I'm Jason Burton from Macomb Township Government Access along with Brad Fetters. And we come to you from Dakota High School, getting set for this football game between the Dakota Cougars and the Warren Mott Marauders. And Brad, let's start with uh, Dakota. Come in two and one on the season. Their one loss a couple weeks ago against Eisenhower. So they're looking to not start 0-2 in Mac Red play. Yeah, it was really a tough loss against the Ike Eagles, a 26-point defeat. So Dakota's going to want to wipe that one out of the memory banks and regroup here tonight in what is week two of the Mac Red schedule. And they're coming off a fantastic victory, a shutout win over Lance Cruz, 60 to nothing. So plenty of offensive fireworks. This Dakota team nearly averaging 36 points per game. So this is an offense that's really clicking right now. As for Warren Mott, they come in unbeaten 3-0, coming off a of drubbing themselves. Uh, but they're 1-0 in the Mac Red, so right now they have that leg up on Dakota, looking to go 2-0. Yeah, really trying to keep the pace in the Mac Red. Chippewa Valley and that Eisenhower team will play here tonight. So one of those two teams will go 2-0. Warren Mott trying to keep up with them and go 2-0 here if they can win against Dakota. And as for Warren Mott, well, for whatever reason, the Warren Mott Marauders have had Dakota's number four and two all time against the Dakota Cougars. One of the few teams in the MAC Red that can actually say they have a winning record against Dakota. Well, we should have an outstanding matchup here tonight. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments for the opening kickoff here on Macomb Township Government Access. It's another fall Friday night, and your kids should be playing, playing high school football. It's a fun game, and it's safer than ever. It's safe, and it builds character. There's no doubt that participation in extracurricular activities help teach lessons you can't always learn in the classroom. Hard work, teamwork, ethics, integrity, respect. And we think football does that very well. It's safe because the rules. High school rules started taking the head out of the game 40 years ago and are constantly changing to keep safety at the forefront. The coaching. School coaches are, above all else, teachers. We bring to the game an educational perspective. And the equipment are better than ever before. Game equipment has evolved over the years to enhance player safety. And in high school football, we work hard to ensure that it's properly fitted. As a result, serious injuries are at an all-time low. Seriously. The statistics don't lie. Over the years, the most serious injuries are greatly down. And we do a better job than ever before being aware about injuries during games and about young persons returning to play when an injury is suspected. It's safe and it builds. Strong schools and communities. There's nothing like a football Friday night where everything that's good about schools and sports is on display. Lifetime memories and friendships. Great relationships are built through sports, not just on the field, but on the bus rides and all other team activities and tomorrow's community leaders. So many leaders played high school sports and gained the skills that have made them outstanding adults. And it's mother approved. It's a great game and we want to teach it to your kids. Welcome back here in Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt along with Brad Fetters. Getting set for the start of this one here between Dakota and Warren Mott. The Marauders won the coin flip, they deferred. Dakota will receive the kick to start this game, Brad. And nice honor moments ago, they brought out the 2007 state championship team here at Dakota, 10 year anniversary. Yeah, team that finished 14-0, the only team in Macomb County that ever finished a season perfect. They eventually went on to beat Livonia Stevenson 41-21 in that title game. There's a few members of that state title team, a team that averaged nearly 35 points per game. They only scored less than 24 once, and that was a 17-7 state semifinal victory over Catholic Central. So this team here tonight, 10 years after that state title team, looking to put up some duplicate numbers, and this is a high-powered offense, Jason, for this Dakota Cougar team, as we mentioned at the very top of the broadcast. And Warren Mott's going to have their hands full here tonight. Yeah, they're going to look to get off to a good start. Well, I joked with you about the that 2017, Brad. We walked by them. I said, well, no wonder they won a state championship. Every single one of those guys <laughs> is a foot taller than us and, you know, maybe about 50 to 100 pounds bigger than us, too. So you could tell that that was a big team. A Opening of... kickoff taken. Oh. Stumbling down right there was number five, Ronya Walker. Just lost his footing there. It's going to give Dakota poor field position to start this game. 
I'll tell you what, a lot of those Dakota guys from that 07 team probably could suit up here today. There's a lot of big dudes down there. Not the start that Dakota wanted on that kickoff return. The turf monster came up and, and bit them and started out at the 12-yard line. So a win there on the kick for Warren Mott. Dakota pinned deep down in their own end. Dakota's led by Mark Toko, junior quarterback. Dangerous through the air and on the ground. He's a dual threat guy. And these two offenses that we're going to see here tonight like to spread the wide receivers out, get those check me on me's from the sidelines. They will throw it first down, pass complete, and a high catch by Walker. Got a little running room, gets the first down up to the 26 yard line. Good play on first down. Real simple pass there on first down. Like to get your feet wet on the very first play of the game. A little wide receiver screen and good yak. Yards after the catch there. Gets him the first down, moves the chains, and four fresh downs. Actually gave him a poor spot. I thought he had at least a yard or two more than where they place it. It all placed on the 25-yard line, but nonetheless, it's first and 10. They come out again, once again, four wide. Empty backfield. Run a man in motion. This time they hand it off. Number 30, Dustin Solomon. Pickup of maybe a yard, and that's it. Good defense that time by the Marauders. And Dakota's going to want to get a few more guys involved in the run game. Toko, kind of their leading rusher as well from that quarterback position. So I think you're going to see some interchangeable parts in the backfield. You're going to see a lot of motion from the wide receiver position. Some of those jet handoffs from that wide receiver position. and. Multiple looks out of this Dakota offense. Second down and seven as they gave him three yards on that carry. Once again, empty backfield, but once again, Solomon in motion. They fake it this time. Up the middle, Toko has got a first down, nearly escaped. Up over the 40-yard line to the 43. Almost snuck through there, Brad, and he would have been gone. A little misdirection that time out of the backfield. Warren Mott bought on the fake handoff, and Toko found a lane right up the middle. Picked up 13 yards. So the ball placed at the 41-yard line. So huge chunks of yardage on the first three plays offensively for Dakota. Kind of get the sense that Dakota really picking up where they left off last week with those 60 points. And there's definitely a sense of urgency even right off the bat. You can sense that. Once again, end around, they hand it off to Ronye Walker trying to get that left side. Good positive yardage up near midfield. We'll see where they spot it. Well, they've gone to Ronye Walker often here on this first drive. That's what you like to see on first down. Positive yardage, seven yards there on first down. Gets you into a, a second in short. Now they really bring, opens up the playbook. Now they bring in a running package. Dawson Sloan checks in. Standing to the right of Toko. He'll take it. No, it's a fake. They throw it out there. Open. Complete to number 12. That's Ross Lewilski. Got a lot of running room into Warren Mott territory. And another first down for Dakota. And James Murray there from Warren Mott had the opportunity to make the tackle. There was a lot of arm tackling going on down there and able to break the tackle. Good job there by Lewalski. Stay on his feet. Initial contact was there. He was able to keep his balance and pick up some extra yardage. First down and 10 now. Ball placed at the 32 of Warren Mott. Toko once again out of the gun. Empty backfield. Now Walker in motion. They fake the handoff to him. Up the middle once again. This time the Marauders sniff it out. Linebackers really going to be busy here tonight for Warren Mott. Going to really have to shut down those running lanes. Alex Collins on that last tackle, the senior defensive lineman for Warren Mott. Leading the way as well as number 62, Big Khalil Brown, defensive tackle right in the middle, Brad. One of the biggest players on the field tonight. Second down and nine for Dakota. Toko fakes the handoff, looking to throw it over the middle. 
overthrown. A little miscommunication on the route there by Rondé Walker. And Toko feeling a little bit of pressure for the first time. That defensive pressure came from the defensive line. Had a couple men right in his face. Wisely threw it over the head of his wide receiver and will live to see another down. Now this is the first test really on this drive for Dakota. Long yardage situation. Third down and nine coming up. Not afraid to throw the ball. So they've got options and they've got some weapons. They sure do. You gotta like the playmakers on the outside for Dakota. Plenty of speed out there on the outside as well. These DBs from Mont are gonna have their hands full. Toko drops back, pressure there. Floats one out there complete. Little screen pass to Dustin Solomon. Still breaking tackles into the end zone. Touchdown, Dakota. Boy, just a simple little screen pass, and he takes it the distance. A terrific play call there offensively by Dakota, figuring Mott was going to bring the pressure there on third and long with the blitz. You like that matchup, that little screen pass. Toko stood in the pocket long enough to deliver a well-thrown ball. And his running back did all the work getting himself into the end zone for the touchdown. The officials are talking about it right now, though. They're huddling together. Maybe questioning if he was down by contact before scampering off. They, no, they pick up the flag, so. It is gonna be a Dakota touchdown, so they threw a flag late, and then they picked it up. So Dakota has the six nothing lead here with 8.35 left to go in the opening quarter. Extra point upcoming. Nice job at Dustin Solomon. Weaving his way through at Warren Mott secondary. Could have slow going, getting up to the line here, setting their special teams unit for the extra point. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is up on the way, and it is good. Dakota. Their opening possession, they take it all the way down the field, Brad. Strike first, they lead it 7-0. Absolutely what you wanted here if you're a Dakota fan. They punch Warren Mott right in the mouth. The opening drive of this football game. And Warren Mott, we mentioned at the very top of tonight's broadcast, has had Dakota's number four and two in the six meetings between these two schools. They've won the last two. So Dakota gets them here on their home field. This energy out of this building here tonight is really amped up. They're honoring that 07 team and way to answer the bell here for the Cougars. But if you remember, they started with poor field position after that opening kickoff yep. and Ronnie Walker just lost his footing. So they started deep in their own territory. Went about 90 yards all the way down the field. So good start for Dakota. Yep, 88 yards in three minutes and 25 seconds. A really well sustained drive. They only had the one incomplete pass and it's a really good start for this Dakota team. So now the question is, how does Warren Mott answer? Talk to the coaching staffs before this game, and really both of them a lot alike, Brad, with the give and take mentalities. You know, they kind of they'll take what you give them. Yeah, a lot. You'll see a lot of read option out of this Warren Mott team, and they like to spread it out as well. Four or five wide receiver sets, and uh, Coach Bauer of Dakota really kind of remarked to us that he thought that. Warren Mott had a lot of size up front. He thought their offensive line was huge. So they'll be able to give their, uh, their quarterback plenty of time to deliver the football and you know, hopefully open up some running lanes for them as well. Back to kick it is number 22, Brady Zarsler. Back to receive this kick. It's James Warner. James Murray takes it actually from the five yard line. Got some running room up the middle. Tripped up to the 29. Good field position to start for the Marauders. Jason, this is a Warren Mott offense that averages 42 points per game. So we talked about a Dakota squad that can put up points. This Warren Mott team's right there with them. And this Warren Mott team started off with a win in Mac Red play against Stevenson, a team that's projected by many to be down this year. And Dakota had to start off their Mac Red season against Ike, one of the teams that's looking to maybe get back to the uh, state championship game. 
And this will be the second MAC Red game you mentioned for Warren Mott, opening on the road at Stevenson. So back-to-back -back road games to start out the MAC Red season. That's a, that's a tough way to start. Jake Doobie, the quarterback from Warren Mott, little option there, hands it off. Good hit in the backfield that time, dropping Ojanaka behind the play. That's number 20. Ojanaka, a huge running back back there for the Marauders. He just looks like an athlete. There you can see big number 20. He's going to be the uh, bell carrier here tonight for Warren Mott. Probably get the majority of the handoffs for them. Oneka Ojanaka, full name. In the backfield once again, they'll give it to him. Nope, they fake it this time. Doobie rolls out to his right. Pressure coming, can't get rid of it. He does at the last second. They're going to rule that an incomplete pass. Ooh. Dakota wanted a fumble, but looked like his arm motion was going forward, and he looked like he was trying to get rid of that ball at the last second. But great pursuit that time by the Dakota defense. Jeremiah Major in there, as well as Tyson Wheeler, Riley Orlando. Coverage downfield was excellent as well. Absolutely nowhere to throw that football. So brings up a third down and 10, and this is a big early play in this game for Warren Mott after giving up a touchdown on the opening possession. Out of the gun, Doobie. Now looks over to his sideline, maybe changing the play. Doobie back to throw it. Sets himself, fires deep out there. Short pass, it's gonna be picked off. Intercepted by Jerron Kelly. Kind of playing center field back there. You can tell that pass didn't have a lot on it. Was looking for Darius Willis right down the center of the field. And it was just kind of a chuck it up type play. And an interception is just about as good as a punt there. I was just about to say, just as good as a punt. You were going to probably do that anyway. So Dakota takes over. Ball placed at the... 27, 28 yard line. Coach Milana for Warren Mott has done an excellent job since he's been the head coach over there. Seemingly forever, he's the longest tenured coach in all of Macomb, 18 seasons now at Warren Mott. He has done a terrific job of really turning this program around. They kind of just toiled down in the Mac Blue seemingly forever and then won a couple Mac Blue championships, moved up to the Mac White, won a couple Mac White championships, <laughs> and have really hung around and done a well job in the Mac Red. He's got his work cut out for him tonight with his group as that first down play, nice pass out there to Ross Lewalski. Good enough for a first down, so Dakota just keeps on rolling. Ball plays at the 39. It's so their fourth year now back up in the Mac Red, and they have a 500 record, 8-8 eight and eight in Mac Red play over the last four years. They've done a nice job. A lot of questions when they realign and they put Warren Mott up in the red. And they've done a nice job competing against some of the top teams in the Mac Red League. Option once again. Toko holds on to it. Tries to get to the outside. Good pursuit by the defense. Boy. Number eight was yep. all over. Number eight wasn't fooled at all. Darius Willis. Stayed with Toko the entire time, a loss on the play. Warren Mott, one of the smaller schools in the Mac Red as well, roughly 1,800 students, so not drawing nearly as many as the Dakotas and the Eisenhowers do. Puts them at a little bit of a disadvantage, but they have found ways to win. A little bit, maybe a chip on their shoulder. Don't quite get the amount of respect maybe that they deserve. Well, over the past few years, they've definitely had some quality, not necessarily the quantity. That's true proven to benefit them. Second down and 12 here for Dakota. Toko out of the gun. He will look to throw once again. Fires out over the middle. Pass complete. Once again, his favorite target tonight thus far, Ross Lewalski. He's going to be close to a first down marker, but looks like maybe a yard shy. Nice job up front right now by the offensive line to Dakota, giving Toko plenty of time to throw the football. Secondary right now for Mott, giving them a big cushion out there. They've been able to complete those mid-range passes. And another third and short, Jason. These are really good situations for this Dakota offense. Well, especially when you got a running quarterback that can just kind of duck his head and run at any time. Ball plays at the 48-yard line. 
Under center now is Toko. Takes it, hands it off. Some running room there. They're gonna have the first down. Nice tough run that time by Looks like number Solomon 30, again. Dustin Solomon, yep. yeah. Look, trying to check the, the jersey there if it was a 30 or 20, but Dustin Solomon, number 30. Tough run up the middle. No look for him tonight for a lot of those tough runs. Dawson Sloan, we've seen him here tonight. Already carry the ball, so they'll kind of go running back by committee. First and 10 now from the 49-yard line. They fake the handoff once again. Toko fires over the top. Got a man out there, incomplete. Intended for Ranye Walker once again. That was just throw it to a spot, Brad, and hope that Walker get under, could get underneath it. Warmack continues to show that 3-4 look defensively up front. You wonder at some point when Dakota keeps picking up yards on the ground, if they'll shift up another D lineman up there, give them a little bit of a forefront. 5.06 left to go in the opening quarter. Dakota leads it 7 to nothing after scoring on the opening possession of the game. Quarterback option once again. They fake the handoff. He steps up and runs for about four yards before being dragged down there once again by number eight, Darius Willis. Kind of been everywhere thus far on defense for the Marauders. That's a win there defensively for Warren Mott. Finally giving Dakota a little bit of a different look here on third down. Have them third and seven to go. Third down and seven. They brought pressure last time on third and long. They look like they're coming with a three-man front. Bring the extra pressure, it's picked up. Toko to his right side, has room, trying to shake a defender, goes down. He looks like he's gonna be close to that first down at the 35 yard line, and they are moving the chains. First yep. down, nice run by Mark Toko. Boy, just, that's a good decision right there. He knew right away he had some open space, knew how much he had to get for the first down, avoided the big hit at the end, which is the important thing by just ducking his head and making sure that you Live to fight another day. And this Dakota offense really looks determined right now, don't they? I mean, just running it all over the field on Warren Mott. Marauder seemingly no answer thus far. First and 10 now. Ball placed at the 35-yard line. Hand off a little end around once again. That's Jerron Kelly. Good positive yardage once again on first down. Sec sets up a second and short. Joseph Delicato getting out of position there for Warren Mott. Got into the inside and Dakota able to take it to the outside. Positive yardage once again, second and manageable. Well, getting back to the point, Brad, of you know, Dakota looks determined tonight. They know if they want any shot at a yeah. Mac Red Championship or at least a co share, they're going to have to win most of the games going away now because they still have Chippewa Valley on their schedule. They still have Romeo, Romeo. on their schedule. And they already suffered the lost Ike. So they got to be looking at maybe a four and one to, to at least give themselves a shot. Inside hand up is going to be enough for a first down once again. Tough running by number 30, Dustin Solomon. Can't imagine many teams win MAC Red titles starting out the season 0 and 2. I don't know if that's ever been done. Now virtually an impossibility, especially with the talent level. You could go three and two in the MAC Red, and usually there's one team or two that finish at four and one or better. Highly unlikely, unless, and especially looking at this year, Brad, the way Eisenhower looks. Chippewa Valley, also a very good team, and they play each other tonight as we speak. Yep. So one of those teams is going to have one loss in the Mac Red. They hand it off to Solomon once again, trying the right side. Got some blocking. Leaps over defender inside the 10-yard line. See where they place this ball. Looks like he doesn't have enough for a first down. No, it is. They are going to place it first inside the 10. Yep, first and goal from the nine. So Dakota primed once again to add some points here in the opening quarter. Another long, sustained drive, nearly taking five minutes off the clock. This will be the 11th play of the drive, Jason. 
So keeping that high-powered Warren Mott attack on the sidelines after their interception. This has been a perfect start thus far for the Cougars. Yeah, we, we've had one flag picked up, Brad, and there hasn't been a penalty, knock on wood, in this game for either side. So it's been played pretty clean. Yep. Fourth week of the season, you hope to have some really good play by now. They do change it now. It is second down and one. I looked at initially that Solomon didn't quite have enough for the first down where they placed that ball. The, the chain gang over there dropped them and, and it indicated that it was a first down, but it actually is second down and short here for Dakota. But that's positive for them as they can, they can pick up a first down here before getting in the end zone. They go to their short yardage package here. Toko under center. Turns, hands it off. Solomon behind a blocker. I don't know if he got up there. He's going to be pretty close. Whole host of marauders in there to make the tackle. And they're all reaching in for that football, trying to strip it free. He never he never went down, so let's see where they place it. Yeah, it's going to be a first down. So yeah, give him a really good spot. So they're going to place that ball at the inside the eight-yard line. So it'll be first down and goal. It's a big defensive moment here for this Marauder team. You don't want to fall down 14 to nothing. Toko takes it, option, fakes the handoff, runs up the middle, still on his feet. Goes down inside the five, pretty close to the goal line. We'll see where they spot it, but some nifty moves right yeah. there by Toko. Toko very evasive. Uh, right outside linebacker had a shot to make the tackle in the backfield, and Toko able to squirm free. Picked up positive yardage. He'll come over to the sideline now. We're under two minutes to go and get some play call. So second down and goal from the two. Coming up on a minute and a half to play in the opening quarter. Dakota would love to jump up by two scores early in this game. Knock it on the door. Three running backs behind Toko. Turns, hands it off. Solomon got a blocker. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. Well, that was almost too easy. His blockers cleared the way. And he just tippy-toed into the end zone. Eight straight runs to cap off that drive. And Dakota laying it on right now. You don't think any of those players from 07 suited up for them, did you, here tonight, Brad? Well, I don't know, but it, I'm sure they were in the locker room prior to the start of this one, giving this Cougar team an earful. A lot of bragging and the flashing of uh, state championship rings, I'm sure. Extra point is good, so it's 14-0 Dakota over Warren Mott. Minute 29 left to go in quarter number one. Well, Brad, you couldn't ask for a better start for Dakota. Two drives, two touchdowns. And they've run 21 plays in this first quarter compared to the three for Warren Mott. And that's exactly what you want to do to a team that scores a lot of points. You want to keep that offense on the sideline, sipping water and Gatorade, and put 14 points up on the scoreboard early. You can, can kind of rest now, let your defense do some work. Warren Mott has to come up with an answer here. I know it's early in this football game as we're at 129 remaining in the first quarter, but Warren Mott, this is this is an uphill climb all of a sudden. I was just about to ask you, Brad, how does Coach Milanoff get his group to answer this and just get that mindset? It's, sometimes you look up at that scoreboard and you say, wow, we're down two scores already. Sometimes it's easy to hang your head and not really keep your head into the ball game. I just got to keep reminding them that you've won the last two against this Dakota squad. They're not invincible anymore, and you've had their number, and you just got to keep reminding them. You think Dakota kind of remembers that? They're playing almost like a team that's been reminded of that, that, hey, we've lost the last two to this team, and they're the only team that has a winning record against us in the MAC Red. So. Dakota kicks it off now, deep. It's gonna be taken at the goal line and brought out. 
by James Murray, number four. Got a little bit of a seam on that far side. Good return up to the 35 yard line and beyond. It's a little bit of a start now for Warren Mott. You get a big special teams play. Terrific kick return, 37 yards. Got that sideline a little excited. Nice job by the Mott faithful in attendance here tonight. They also brought their pep band and the cheerleaders as well. So Warren Mott team traveling pretty well. So here we go, first down and 10, ball placed at the 35 yard line. Doobie out of the gun, running backs to either side. Now they run a man in motion, they'll go out there. That's number four, James Murray, take it down immediately. Beautiful play by number 44, Lorenzo Hassel. Wasn't fooled at all. It's a Warren Mott offense that has negative four yards through nearly a quarter of play. Under a minute to go in the quarter, second down and 14 now. Newby takes the snap, a little option, he hands it off. No gain on the play. Number 55 for Dakota in there, Jeremiah Major. Well, they're just sniffing out everything right now. This defense is, has came to play tonight. Penetration through all the gaps by this defensive line. Linebackers coming in to help as well. See if they run one last play here. Third down and 13. I don't think they're in any rush right now. A long yarded situation, down to six seconds. I think they're just gonna let this thing run out. And that's exactly the way the opening quarter will come to a close. It's been all Dakota. They lead it 14 to nothing. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments for the start of the second quarter. Don't go away. Hi, I'm prosecuting attorney Eric Smith, reminding you it's against the law to consume alcohol if you're under the age of 21. Underage use or possession of alcohol is a criminal offense with serious legal consequences, up to 93 days in jail, up to a $500 fine, and can stay on your permanent record. A conviction for minor in possession of alcohol can negatively affect your life and prevent you from entering many professions. Don't close the door to your future. Don't drink underage. Welcome back here on Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt and Brad Fetters with you. Getting set for the start of the second quarter here between Dakota and Warren Mott. Cougars lead it 14 to nothing. They have it second down and third, excuse me, third down and 13. Back to throw Doobie. Got time, fires deep out there once again. And it looks like it's gonna be picked off once again. This time by number four, Jaquan Rosier. It's incomplete, actually, as it was knocked away. Almost had that interception, Brad. It's another three and out here for the Warren Mod offense, throwing the ball deep. And there are two offensive drives, Jason, very similar, nearly resulting in another interception. Just an absolute nightmare start to this football game for the Warren Mod Marauders. That could have been a lot worse and a, a terrible shame. punt. That punt's gonna go about 20 yards. Not even. Let's see where they place it. Goodness, they're gonna mark that at the 43 yard line. Dakota's gonna start in Warren Mott. It's gonna be an 11 yard punt. Wow. Now Warren Mott's gonna have to put something together here offensively or defensively before the wheels completely fall off. But if you're Dakota, you're playing on your home field, hey, take it to them. And See what happens. You want to win in the Mac Red. You just, I said earlier on, both teams are going to kind of take what you give them. And right now, Dakota's taking all they want. That could have been worse. 
I was about to say, but after that punt, Dakota's got that ball in better field position than they would have on that intercept if they would have intercepted that ball. I mean, only two negative plays offensively for Dakota were the two incomplete passes and another big run on first down. Solomon close to the first down marker. Right now, the Marauders have no answer for Dakota. It's going to be short. It's going to be second down and one. Dakota just continues to win on first down. You win first down and get yourself in short second down situations. Really limit with Dakota. Check that what Warren Mott can do defensively. Out of the gun, they'll throw the ball. Pressure coming. Toko scrambles, got the first down, and then some. Boy, Warren Mott brought some pressure that time. Toko saw it. And that's what that's what you get with an elusive quarterback. Sure. When, you, when, you're, when your QB can just duck his head and run and pick up positive yardage like that, it's so tough to defend against. Just ducked his head, lowered his shoulders, and put his head down and ran to the sticks and beyond. Well, like you mentioned, when you only need one yard. It opens up that playbook. You got every play in the playbook available. You're right. And Mott that time, deciding to blitz, they showed pressure and came back to bite him. And it came back to bite him on that little wide receiver screen as well. Out of the gun, they fake the handoff. Inside, Toko got running room, got one man to beat, couldn't get by him. Takes it down to the 15-yard line. Going to have the first down. But boy, if he would have broken one more tackle or got through, he would have been in the end zone. And James Murray with the touchdown saving tackle there. And when the secondary guys are your leading tacklers, you know you're in trouble. And that's exactly what Dakota has forced Warren Mott to do. They're, they're getting into that linebacking core and secondary awfully quick here on these running downs. First down and 10 from the 15 yard line. Dakota can pick up a first down before getting in the end zone. This time pressure comes and they're gonna get to him. Toko goes down, that's big number 20. That's Ojanaki, Ojanaka, excuse me. Yep, Delicato in there as well for Warren Mott. That time Toko, before he could even look up to decide whether to run or throw the ball, he had two players wrapped up on him. First negative play of the night for Dakota. Second down and 17 now. I'm pretty impressed so far with Toko's play. He was JV quarterback last season, a team that went undefeated. So custom to winning and custom to that quarterback position, and he's looked really good in this ball game. Fakes the handoff on the option. He'll throw it. Pass. Got a man out there. Caught. Look at end zone. Touchdown, Dakota. Jerron Kelly. He knew that contact was coming, waited for it, adjusted his body nicely, and got into the end zone for six more. Real simple drag route that time. For Kelly, across the center, and an easy pitch and catch. Toko had plenty of time to get that one right on Kelly's numbers, and 22 yards into the end zone for a 20-0 lead. The big thing there was Toko had a ton of time. He was sitting back in the pocket and he could look out and see, see what the secondary was doing and he found him cutting across the middle. Extra point up and good, Dakota. Opening up a can here in the first half. They lead it 21 to nothing. That Warren Mott faithful on that far side is Got to be wondering what the heck is going on here. And got to be shocked. They know they can, can compete better than this. But if you're Dakota also too, you, I don't know if they can play much better than this. Offensively, they're moving the ball with precision. Defensively, they're stifling the Marauders right now. If that continues, we're going to be looking at a lopsided uh, victory for Dakota. And really, thus far, a statement game for this Dakota Cougar team. And they needed one after losing to Eisenhower 42-16. You wondered what this team was made of, and they've really answered the bell here and got a couple winnable games on their schedule. They go on the road to take on Sterling Heights-Stevenson next week before returning home to take on 
pretty good Ford team out of the Mac White. So an opportunity to pick up a string of victories here and really kind of take a stranglehold on this season. You wonder if a big special teams play might be in order here for Warren Mott. They're not going to get an opportunity to return this kick. Oh, beautiful kick right there. By Zarsler into the end zone, touchback. Warren Mott will start at their own 20. So thus far for Warren Mott, throwing three incomplete passes, including an interception. You have one yard rushing, negative four passing yards. Well, they didn't have that interception. That interception was, that, that was dropped. Right, but, but they did have the pick on the, on, the, on the first possession of the game. If you recall. Oh, that, that's, that's right, you're right, correct. So nearly had two gosh, interceptions. Gosh, I, I'm thinking to myself, how, <laughs> how bad could this be for Warren Mott? Well, the two possessions could have been two interceptions. First down and 10 from the 20, and you gotta just wipe the mind clean now and start fresh and see what they can do. Option, looking left, well mm -hmm. defended, and down Doobie goes again. Lorenzo Hassel. Once again, just in high pursuit, Hassel wasn't going to let him go. L.J. Hassel. Oof. Jake Seven Doobie. Seven yards loss. Jake Doobie wanted to get rid of that ball, but it was just well defended. He had nowhere to go with the ball, and then tried to scramble out to the left side, and Hassel was all over him. This offensive line from Warren Mott really getting worked on. Option play, they hand it off. Mm. Not much there. Good job by Solomon on defense. Picking up the tackle, taking down Ojanaka. They'll bring up third and long. And deja vu all over again for the Marauders. Boy, when you lose seven yards on first down and then come out on second down and run the football. Run the football and can't pick up anything. Now you're you're just putting yourself in these tough positions. Third down and fourteen. Yep. Dakota well, brings out the nickel back and just dares you to throw into coverage. And they've done it twice, and they've been intercepted once and almost twice. I wouldn't be surprised if the linebackers drop back in coverage as well. They could bring a blitz, pass out there to the left side, complete to number seven. That's Alahim Dijon, or Dijon Alahim, excuse me. Not going to have nearly enough for the first down, so... Warren Mott once again will punt, Brad, with 7.27 left to go in the second quarter. That was their first positive offensive play besides that three-yard run. So nine yards, couldn't spring their wide receiver, missed that initial block there, and Dakota's going to have wonderful field position once again on their fourth drive of this game. A much better punt this time is this one. Sends Walker back to the 40. He's got some running room, though, into Warren Mott territory. Still on his feet, a flag down late. So we'll see what this flag is. A good return by Ronya Walker. Illegal block in the back against Dakota, so they'll bring him back quite a bit. Jason, this is a warm out team that's used to winning at the beginning part of seasons. They're looking for their third straight 4-0 start to a season. And if you recall, last year they actually started out 6-0 before losing three of their last four games, including a first-round playoff loss to Southfield. And Everything. We got, we got, hold on, I'm sorry, Brad. We got a flag down now. An illegal substitution against Dakota now. So they're gonna move back even further. They, they had the ball placed inside Warren Mott territory. Now they're moving them back. Ball placed at the 47 yard line. Still good field position for Dakota, but boy, a penalty, two penalties and moved them back. They would have had it deep in Marauder territory. First down and 15 now. Solomon in motion. They fake the handoff. Toko 
Little option play, that's picked up. So Warren Mott's starting to recognize this a little bit more as the game goes on. Not much running room there. Jabbar and Warner in on the stop. I wonder if Mott's just gonna kind of maybe put a spy on Tokyo, kind of limit his looks in terms of his running game. You put a, a usually a middle linebacker or an outside linebacker on him and just kind of spy wherever Toko goes, your linebacker goes, and you, you dare him to throw. And really the first, second and long situation for this Dakota offense. Coming up on six minutes to play in the half. Second down and 15. Toko takes it out of the gun. Looking to run it up the middle once again. Finds a little bit of a seam. Dangerous, put his head down low. Took a shot. Not nowhere near the original line of scrimmage. So you're gonna be looking at a third down and long now here for the Cougars. And Fogarty coming up to make that body slamming tackle on Toko. You don't like seeing your, your quarterback get tossed around like a rag doll there and worry about his shoulder. So it looks like Warren Mott has made some adjustments now, Brad, and took him a quarter and a half to do that, but they look like they have made some adjustments against Toko and the offense. Now they need to get off the field and make some offensive adjustments. It's like punch, counter punch. Dakota's gonna have to figure out now how to utilize some of their weapons and not just focus on a run happy offense with their quarterback. Out of the gun once again. Toko to throw it. Fires deep out there, looking for Walker, incomplete. Avoided the pass interference call. So Dakota will have to punt this ball for the first, uh, first time here tonight. Dangerous return man, James Murray back to return the punt. Looks like we had a false start. Yep, yeah, sure did. But two, two guys on that line moved. The officials caught it, so move them back five more. So after three beautiful drives, Brad, that one kind of was ugly. Sure was. You're gonna credit the, that one quickly. Credit the Warren Mott defense. You you hit the nail right on the head. They've made the adjustments. You just worry if they maybe dug themselves too big of a hole down three touchdowns. I should get decent field position here, depending on this punt. Nearly blocked. Good kick all the way to the 20-yard line. It's going to bounce. They're going to ignore it, and it takes a Dakota bounce. They picked it up pretty quick, but it's gonna be placed at the 21 yard line. And that's where Warren Mott will start. Well, it's Warren Mott offense looking for their first, first down of this football game. Three straight, three and outs. Lots of big games tonight, Brad. The, obviously a marquee one was Eisenhower at yep. Chippewa Valley. The other Mac Red game tonight, Stevenson at Romeo. As all the league games are being played tonight. They fake the inside handoff, pass it on first down. Complete out there to James Murray, still on his feet, look out. Some defenders back there, but a huge gain all the way into Dakota territory near the 40 yard line. That's what Warren Mott needs to get going here. A big play from James Murray. And just a simple pass pattern out in the flat. And you just get your athletes in space and let them do all the hard work and a terrific run after the catch there by James Murray. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel down 21 points. You just stick to your bread and butter and that's what the Marauders did there and really got some big positive yards. First down and 10 now for Warren Mott. Newby out of the gun, fakes the handoff, option inside, got running room, looking to break it perhaps to the outside. He's gonna have the first down. Taken down near the 25 yard line, another big play. And just like that, Brad, Warren Mott's in business. It's amazing what happens when your defense comes up with a big stop. 
Convert some of that energy over to your offense, and this would be a huge drive right before halftime, knowing you get the ball back to start the second half. If they can put points on the board, it's, it's must make time now for Warren Mont. They need to put something up there. Doobie out of the gun once again, runs a man in motion. Hands it off inside this time. Ojanaka bouncing off defenders, gonna have another first down near the 10 yard line. Let's see where they mark it. You can tell by the emotion down there, Warren Mott's fired up. And they're getting that offensive line involved. Those big guys up front need to start blocking a little bit better and spring Ojanaka there. Avoided that first tackle in the backfield, kept those legs churning, picked up positive yards. And Mott now knocking on the door for the first time. First down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Boy, they could pick up a first down before getting in the end zone. If they get it down to the goal line, they fake the handoff. Quarterback option, looking for the corner. Good pursuit, though, that time by Solomon. Stayed with Doobie the entire time, and I don't think he picked up a yard. Terrific coverage once again by the Dakota secondary. Doobie hasn't had much in terms of guys open downfield. And it's read option plays when you can limit your looks down the field and kind of turn Mott into a one-dimensional football team. Those are wins for Dakota. Actually Second sack of this football game. Actually lost a yard, yep, on this, on that draw, on that, excuse me, on that run. Brings up a second down. Option once again, inside, quarterback keeper, touchdown, Marauders. Doobie faked the handoff that time. No, Ojanaka, the defense went with him. And the Marauders on the board finally here with 342 left to go in the half. Beautiful play design and the defense just bid on it. It's amazing how similar these two offenses are. They love that read option look. You would think they would know the, the defenses would know each other well. Extra point is up and it is good. So Warren Mott can take something positive into the locker room at halftime on the board. And you can see Coach Milanoff over there trying to fire up his group. He needs his defense to come up big one more time here before the end of the half. And big James Murray catch on the very first play of this possession was huge for Warren Mott. Four play drive. Yep. You can move down the field in four plays. You're doing something right. 39 yards on the very first play of the possession, really spraying them and a couple really good solid runs. And Doobie putting that one in his back pocket and gets to pay dirt. First touchdown of the game for Warren Mott. And now have to come up with another stop. You need to string these two together. The Warren Mott defense takes some of that momentum into the halftime. So 21-7 our score, 3.42 left to go on the half. Dakota will get this ball back. Ranye Walker back to take this kick. Short low liner, takes a hop. Walker picks it up at the eight yard line. Up to the 15, 20, 25. Still trying to make some guys miss. Bounces back to the outside. Got some more running room. Up towards midfield, pushed out of bounds. A beautiful return for Ranya Walker. And those are scary, Brad. A lot of times when you change direction like that, you often see holding flags and sure. blocks in the back, but no flags on the play. Mm -hmm. He kind of bounced out of that pack right around the 25 yard line. And you said he changed directions and went to that near side of the field and was able to tiptoe that sidelines. And they're gonna say he stepped out of bounds all the way back at the 44, but it's still a really positive kick return there and for the Warren Mott touchdown. First down and 10 as the ball is placed at the 44 yard line. They said he stepped out there before he got up to midfield. So still great field position here with lots of time. Toko hands it off. Solomon cuts back into the inside, picks up a couple yards. 
You gotta think Dakota would just love to pick up maybe a first down or two, and even if they can't score, try to take this clock down and go into halftime up by two scores. Yeah, you can tell this Warren Mott defense is starting to get some penetration and really starting with that defensive line. They were manhandled throughout that first quarter, but Fogarty able to work through a double team that time to make the tackle. Linebackers getting involved in the play. They're getting a little bit closer to that line of scrimmage. You might have noticed Mott starting to put those eight guys in the box and, and really kind of challenging Dakota right now, daring them to throw the football. Second down and seven. Toko out of the gun. Looking to his left, now trying to adjust. He might want to run with it. Not much space there, steps up, avoids a defender into Ward Mott territory. Let's see where they mark it. A helmet came off down there. And James Murray's gonna have to sit out a play. Good pursuit that time by number six, Joseph Delicato. He shook off number 30 for Dakota. Solomon. Solomon, the running back, providing some of that protection in the backfield. Toko made a nice adjustment there to stay in bounds and avoid a defender. May have picked up an extra yard or two. It's going to bring up a third down and one. About a yard and a half, perhaps. Lots to do here in the short yardage. They'll go out of the gun, though. Four wide. Toko will fire over the oh, middle. Got a man open. out there, incomplete. Oh boy, that might have been a dagger right there. That was a touchdown all the way. He passed just a little out of the outstretched <laughs> arms of Solomon. Got his fingertips on it, just couldn't bring it in. And boy, there was nobody behind him. If you'd have caught that in stride, that would have been six more. <laughs> see what happens when you put eight in the box and the running back in the backfield's able to, to get into open spaces there and squirm his way out of the backfield. Wide open right down the seam. That was a well-thrown ball, and Dakota's going to go for it here, Jason. Showing a little bravado here with a minute 54. Ball near midfield. Under center now, Toko. Maybe just try to draw him off sides. And it worked. Boy. Absolutely what they were trying to do is go up there and hard count, and they got him to jump. And that's going to give Dakota a first down. And those are the, the head shakers if you're the opposing coaches over there on that opposing sideline. And Coach Milano has to be beside himself there right now. Is One of his top guys too that jumped, Ojanaka on that far side of the line. Giving him a free five yards and fresh set of downs now with a minute 54. Toko out of the gun once again, fakes the handoff. Looking to throw the ball, now Jumps out to his right, fires out there, got a man. This one's we have coming a flag, back. Yeah, we have a flag down. Complete out there to number 20, Dawson Sloan. But there was a flag behind the play. More than likely, that's a hold. Yeah, it's going to come against Dakota. Liam Fogarty was in the backfield, and Dakota player had no choice but to hold there. There's the official call. So Dakota moving back another 10 yards. Fogarty, number 53, really a disruption right now off of that defensive line for Warren Mount. He's done a terrific job of getting into the backfield. This is going to be a big penalty here for Dakota. It's going to be first down and 25. Got a minute 43 left. You got your timeout, so there's still plenty of time, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to cough this up and give it back to Warren Mount with time and timeouts. Empty backfield altogether now. Five wide. Toko, good protection, fires out on the middle, complete. Lewalski, first catch for him since the opening quarter. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down and 10. Just shy of the original yard of scrim line of scrimmage, excuse me, 43 yard line is where they place it. Under a minute to go now, Dakota not in a hurry. Pretty interesting at this point now, they wouldn't try to hurry this up, maybe call a timeout or two, but see what they do here. Quick snap, floater over the middle, dangerous pass. Solomon catches it, takes a shot to the gut. 
by James Murray. It'll be close to first down yardage, and it will be a first down. And now we're going to get a timeout. Dakota will burn one of theirs. Salomon bent over at the waist. You mentioned he took a shot from that safety. He came up into pass coverage. Well, that little floater allowed the defender to close yeah. in on it quickly. And as soon as, as soon as Murray put his head down, Solomon catches the ball and turns and he just takes a spear right to the gut. Warren Mott seemingly has gotten beat by that play three or four times here tonight. That seam has been wide open all night long for Dakota. So it'll be first down and 10, 40 seconds remaining. Lots of options here too, Brad. They can, Dakota's got a kicking game, so yep. got to think that even if time runs out and you can try a last second field goal, you could at least try to get three more. You probably got time for about three more plays. Pass over the top, got a man out there, incomplete. Broken up at the last possible second. And great By closing number eight, speed. Darius Willis, safety for them. Brandon Mishalak out there for a moment was open, but like you said, good closing speed. And Willis having to put on the Jets and reached out that big paw to knock that pass away. It's a huge pass deflection there. 35 seconds remaining in this first half. Could easily have been fourth touchdown of this first half for Dakota. So second down and 10 now. Empty backfield once again. Of course, it's never an empty backfield with Toko, who can step up. Pressure there. Pass complete over the middle. Dangerous throw, but good patience in the pocket that time by Toko, who took a big hit but completed the pass to Lewalski. Another first down for Dakota, under 30 seconds now remaining. Toko getting that pass out the last possible oh. second. Allowed his wide receiver to get that separation on the slant. 17 yards on the pass completion. And once again, Dakota now with under a half minute left, knocking on the door. Only one time out left though, Jason. But you talk about a game of inches, about an inch away from that ball possibly being knocked out of his hands by the defender. I mean, he took a shot right when he got rid of that ball. But the middle of the field has been open. You mentioned it a few moments ago. They've kind of burned Warren Mott in that same play. The middle of the field has yeah. been open. Well, that's that's a case where the linebackers are coming up and run support, right? Because Dakota burned them so many times in that first quarter on the, on the QB sneaks and some of the plays out of the backfield. So the linebackers come up to help and run support. And the next thing you know, the middle of the field's wide open. The secondaries have to come up and sneak in, and they're getting burned. First down at 10 now for Dakota. Out of the gun, Toko. Looks back to throw it, fires to his left, wide open. Solomon, end zone, touchdown Dakota. Boy, too easy, wide open. Well, we got we got a flag on the play behind. The officials. Throwing right on the 15 yard line. You yeah, wonder we, if this might be another hold on Dakota. Solomon was wide open. They pick up the flag, clearly coming back, so. And Running back screen. It's been available to Dakota as well. When Warren Mott sells out on those blitzes, the running back has found himself open out of the backfield, but this one will come back. There's holding call against Dakota. Official call there holding. So take six points off the board, and those are the, the type of th mistakes that you don't want to make, especially on scoring plays. Dakota still has plenty of time. They've got one timeout remaining. 24 seconds left. Plenty of time to run some plays towards the sidelines, maybe take a shot deep into the end zone as well. An option, they fake it, they throw it out there. Solomon incomplete. Toko led him a little too much that time. And wheel route out of the backfield for Solomon. Down the sideline, good play call. He catches it, you hope he gets out of bounds and preserves some of that clock. 20 seconds now, a couple more shots at the end zone before bringing in the kicking unit. High rate of efficiency right now on this Dakota offense. I like what I see out of them. 
obviously have really shaken off that loss, Dyke. A blowout win last week. Yeah, it's a perfect time to have that crossover game after that tough one against Eisenhower and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Like to get some of that confidence back in that 60 nothing drubbing of Lance Cruz. They're going to look end zone here in the corner. Pass out there. Out of bounds. Out of bounds and was dropped anyway. A heck of a shot that time. And we'll see the number. Is that Jaquan Rosier, number four? Can't quite tell. He landed straight square on his back. And you got to... Hope he's okay. Maybe just had no, the wind knocked out of him. Brandon Michelak, number six. He's holding his lower back. Well, he went up to get that ball. Yeah, when you when he comes down, it's like a body slam right on that turf. Morgan Madigan, the Warren Mott trainer over there to tend to him as they wait for the Dakota staff to come over. Boy, Brad, you know, we, we mentioned the blowout wins. You know, I find it pretty interesting, you know, if anybody ever says, well, you know, there's not much difference between the leagues. Oh, yes, there is. There, there's a huge drop-off. And, I, I mean, you can, you can try to defend the lower leagues all you want, but the Mac Red is the top notch in the state. And you could tell by all those crossover games, Dakota shuts out Lance Cruz 60 to nothing. Warren Mott 50 to nothing over Port Huron. Ike 42 to nothing over Roseville. I mean, it, Chippewa Valley, 42 to nothing over Warren Cusno. So all, I mean, all of them threw shutouts. They all <laughs> shutouts, but all blowout wins. And it was it's just unbelievable, the drop-off, and that's how competitive the Mac Red is. Good to see Mitchellack up and jogging off the field moments ago. And clearly just had the wind knocked out of him and slammed on the ground like that. Boy, that can that can knock it out of you for sure. And that's kind of a case in point of how well this coaching staff at Warren Mott has done getting them prepared and ready for MAC Red play. These these last four years, they have that 500 record. They've made that move up from the MAC White to the MAC Red and really haven't had any sort of drop off. They've competed against the big boys and obviously have beat Dakota the last two seasons. Third down and 25. Toko buys himself some time. He's going to run with it, taken down. Nowhere near a first down marker. So six seconds remaining. Dakota looks like they're going to bring out the field goal unit. They're going to try one here. It's going to be about a 39-yard field goal. Ball placed at the 22-yard line. So 32-yard attempt. Thirty-two yards, yep, and then with the extra distance, you're right, thirty-nine yards. That's a that's a deep high school kick. A lot of high school <laughs> kickers can't can't boot him from that distance. We'll have to see here, but you got nothing to lose. Six seconds left. This I guess you just a, don't want to get a block, that's it. This is a, sh a shaky kick for a college kicker. We've seen a lot of games in the NCAA hinge on kicking. Brady Zarsler from the right hash, too, and Mott's going to call a timeout and try to ice the kicker. Why not? You got a couple timeouts. You can't take them with you. Make him think. He's going to be kicking from that right hash. Coach Milanoff and his group. Just a rough start here tonight. Fell down quick in that first quarter. Fell down 21 nothing in total, and then... Came back, finally scored a touchdown. Now they're trying to prevent Dakota from adding more points here before halftime. Dakota, two drives of 13 plus plays as they have owned the time of possession in this game. So here we go. Wind to the kicker's back. Snap is good. Kick is up, and it is no good wide left. It had the distance, Brad, well, <laughs> well past the crossbar that time, but just he pulled it left. So Dakota comes away with nothing, 4.8 seconds. Warren Mott's going to have to at least come out here and kneel on this ball. Yeah, I don't think they will do anything more than that, knowing they will have the first possession of the second half. Oh, well worth the attempt there for Dakota. Well, he More had the distance. I thought that thing looked good going up. It just 
pulled it a little bit to the left. So the score remains 21-7. And Warren Mott, as we mentioned, more than likely going to just kneel on this one and head into the locker room. I think the official wants them to put more time on the clock. They bump it while well, they're adjusting it right now or maybe take some off. They had four seconds on the big board. and they uh, it's two seconds. Okay. I mean, they're, they're bouncing it back and forth. We have no idea. <laughs> we have no way to identify where they're going with it. Right now it's stopped at two seconds. They haven't adjusted it now. So they're just going to simply say two seconds. And Warren Mott's lined up to run a play. But we'll just see here what they do. With two seconds left, they snap the ball. They quarterback option up the middle. They run that play. It's going to be enough for a first down. And that's the way the first half will come to a close. Dakota leads it 21-7 over Warren Mott. Brad, your thoughts on the opening half? A wonderful start here for Dakota. Emotions running high after the ceremony. The honor of the 2007 state title team. They get out to that quick 21-0 lead. Warren Mott comes up with an answer, and you hope for their sidelines that they're able to come up with a little bit of momentum to carry them into the third quarter after the halftime intermission. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments for the start of the second half. Don't go away. says we should start worrying about drinking at these things. You're only 12. I know. I'm just glad you know better, sweetheart. You're too smart for that, right, honey? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Hi, my name is Tom Izzo, the men's basketball coach at MSU. The threat of school violence is something that affects everyone and needs to be taken seriously. Okay to Say is a confidential way you can report anything that threatens your safety or the safety of others. If you see or hear something that doesn't seem right, submit a tip to Okay to Say. You can call, text, email, go online, or use the Okay to Say app. You could be the one person who helps to prevent a tragedy. Welcome back here in Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt and Brad Fetters getting set for the start of the second half here between Dakota and Warren Mott. Varsity football and Brad Dakota leads it 21 to seven. Missed an opportunity late in that second quarter, but they still have a two touchdown lead. Yeah, three straight possessions to start this ball game. Dakota marches down the field and scores touchdowns and led it 21 nothing. He thought they were gonna blow the doors right off of this game, but. Warren Mott answers back with 3.42 remaining in the second quarter with a touchdown of their own to trim the lead down to 14 points. And you just hope for their sake they're able to carry some of that momentum here into the second half. Dakota outgaining Warren Mott unofficially, 253 yards to 99. Dakota really a balanced attack, 108 yards on the ground, 145 through the air. For Warren Mott, really they just kind of picked up some chunk yardage throughout that first half before really springing for a big uh, big pass to start their fourth possession of the game. 48 through the uh, air, 51 on the ground for those 99 yards. So Dakota defensively was really strong, holding Warren Mott to a, under 100 yards. And we talked about it at the very top of tonight's broadcast. These are really two high-powered offenses. Warren Mott coming into play, averaging nearly 42 points per game, and Dakota really holding them in check. Well, you look at those yardage that they did get. 
most of that 99 yards they got on one drive. So, I mean, it's just, it was indicative of what the defense did for Dakota in that first half. Didn't capitalize right at the end. They had a chance. They got a couple penalties that hurt them, and then they missed a field goal that would have made it 24-7. And now they kick off to start the second half. Warren Mott will return it, number four. That's James Murray back there. And he's the playmaker for Warren Mott. He had that 39-yard uh, reception in the second quarter. So 39 of those 99 yards on one single play. He's going to take this one from inside his own end zone. They'll rule the touchback immediately. Boy, he wanted to run it out, too. <laughs> he sure did. Can't do that in the high school game. As soon as it breaks the play in the, uh, the goal line, it's an automatic touchback. So, First down and 10 coming up for Warren Mott at their own 20. You got to wonder late in that second quarter when things started to open up a little bit for the Marauders if they will look at that and change their offense a bit to try to adapt to what def the defense was giving them. So they had the interception on the first drive, back-to-back -back three and outs, and then that one big play that resulted in, in positive yardage and then the touchdown before the half. So Dakota really owning the time of possession and, and, and kept this high-powered Warren Mott attack on the sidelines. So we'll see with starting them with the ball here to start out the second half if they can sustain a drive here. So vital to their success. Doobie hands it off inside. A little bit of running room. Short pickup that time by Ojanaka. Taken down by Jared Rappin. Eli Andery in there as well. Not a lot of positive plays offensively for Warren Mott, so you like to start there. A little simple draw play up the middle for five yards. Gets him into a second and manageable. Another inside handoff, trying to establish a run here in the second half. No pickup on that run. Carry by number two, Curtis Hamilton. Brings up short, third down and short, excuse me. Well, the one thing, Brad, that hurt Ward Mott in that first half, a lot of their drives, they would shoot themselves in the foot on first down and really would set up a lot of third and longs. Third down and short here. Let's see what they do. Doobie holds on to it. It's going to be taken down, but he's going to have enough for the first down. I'm going to place that one at the 33-yard 30, line. Warren Mott quickly up to the line. Trying a little hurry up here, perhaps. Doobie hands it off inside. Lots of running room. Curtis Hamilton, the speedy back, looking to make a couple guys miss. Taken down deep into Dakota territory. 26 yard line, a huge play for the Marauders. So they come out of halftime with four straight runs and they're gonna have a little bit of a hurry up offense. Dakota having a hard time getting a player off the field. So halftime adjustments for coach Tom Milanoff and his staff. He wants to speed it up. He puts it in the hands of a speedy running back. Once again, it's Curtis Hamilton picking up positive yardage on first down. Those are the adjustments we talked about. Obviously, the coaching staff for Warren Mott saw something at the end of that second quarter that was working, and now they've changed up their personnel a little bit. Another first down. Now got, a timeout. Now a timeout. Dakota doesn't know what hit them thus far here in this drive. They want to talk about it. They didn't have their personnel set. It's a little bit of an added wrinkle now to this warm out offense, this little hurry up offense. Get right up to the line of scrimmage after the big run. They clearly caught Dakota off guard because there were some players running on and off the field. They didn't know what to do. That's why Coach Bauer had to burn a timeout. First two minutes here in the third quarter. So you bust off the 40 yard run and then you get right back to the offensive line and pick up another 10 yards, and all of a sudden you're in the Dakota red zone here, and Dakota tested seemingly for the first time in this ball game. Second down, they have it on the scoreboard right now, it's first and 10, but that's not accurate, it's second down. Right. 
Second down and five. High formation now. Out of the gun. Doobie. Looks over to the sideline, and that's an it always an interesting wrinkle. They kind of take a full snap there and then look over to the sideline, try to get, maybe get the defense to jump off sides too. Sometimes that might work. Doobie hands it off inside once again. Hamilton, nowhere to go that time. Bottled up, it'll bring up third down. Yeah, a little check with me on the sideline. Coaching staff able to take a look at what the defense presents as well. See if they want to maybe switch up the blocking schemes, call an audible. Coach Milanov did indicate the offense always gets the last call. Defense kind of sets themselves and the offense can kind of take a look at what the defense is going to give them. Third down and five now, big play here for Mott. They hand it off inside, Hamilton. Looks like he's going to have enough for the first down. Boy, it's close. Might have to bring out the chains here. Let's see what uh, kind of Referee indicating get. first down. Yeah, they, they just enough. That's Pick, a, picked up five plus, so first down for Warren Mott. That's a big yard to gain there because it would have been decision-making time on fourth and short, so they won't have to make that choice now. At least not yet. Out of the gun once again, Doobie. Another option. They hand it off inside again. Hamilton. Another short pickup. Well, they switched things up a little bit, and they've gone to Curtis Hamilton here in the second half. Brad, he didn't have a carry in the first half. Eight straight runs to start this third quarter from the Warren Mott offense. Running downhill. I think that coaching staff challenged that front five to get something done. Coach Bauer for Dakota kind of indicated that he thought that was really a strength of this Warren Mott squad. It was their offensive line, and they really didn't show it in the early going, but they have answered the bell here in the third quarter. Another option this time. They'll throw it. Doobie rolls out to his left, being chased. Hassel got him again. Ooh, gonna oh, going to get a horse collar. Either a horse collar or maybe you got some of the face masks dragging him down. The officials are talking about it right now. It might have looked rough, but if he had Jersey and tugged him down, they're not going to pick up the flag. Let's see what the call is. It's a personal foul. It's a horse collar tackle. Automatic first down. Well, he indicated a second down. Usually on a personal foul, it's an automatic fresh set of downs, but they're still calling it second down. That's what the official indicated. Right now it's still second down and three. I'm not quite sure on that one, Brad, but I guess we'll we'll try to figure that one out. Second down and three nonetheless here for Mott. And now we're gonna get a false start against the Marauders. So move him right back. So after a first half, Brad, that was pretty much penalty free. Starting to pile up here in the third quarter. It'll be second down and eight now for Warren Mott. They can still get a first down inside the five yard line. I'm still stumped over that personal foul. Why that's not an automatic first down? Not quite sure. Second down and nine. They hand it off inside. Hamilton once again tripped up. Gets down near the five yard line. It'll bring up third down and short. Third down and four is what they're calling it. Not quite sure about that one. Where did they place that ball? They didn't place it inside the five. That's a, it looked like he got further than that, but his knee must have hit at about the seven. Dakota showing a little bit of pressure. Yep. Ruby takes it, he's gonna go down. That time Hassel just wrapped him up and took him down. Not gonna telegraph that play just a little bit. One of the captains of the team, L.J. Hassel. Fourth and long, and now, he's, Brad, this is that decision time. Do they go for it, or do they just try to put three points up on the board? It looks like 
they're going to trot out the kicking unit. Try to make this an 11-point game. You try to take points here and consider it a win. Get the ball all the way down to the six-yard line. Can't punch it in. Evan Weirbicki, number 28, the kicker. Kick is up. It's low, and it doesn't have enough. No good. So Dakota's defense holds. Warren Mott can't capitalize on a, a well-sustained drive, and the score remains 21-7. 6.41 left to go in the third quarter. And Brad, I guess for Dakota, they did take away a win on that one. They <laughs> yeah. allowed Ward Mott to go all the way down the field and got a horse collar. Still still a question mark about that tackle, or about that personal foul. And it might have been legitimate, but how Ward Mott did not get a fresh set of downs on that penalty is beyond me. And bend but don't break defense. And to hold Mott to zero points there, Warren Mott was right on the doorstep, got the ball down to the six yard line, and then they had the false start penalty. Well, those penalties, those false start penalties, they're drive killers. So here we go, first down and 10. Ball placed at the 20 yard line. They hand it off, a little wide receiver sweep. We saw a lot of that in the first quarter. That's Solomon coming around from the wide receiver position. Picks up positive yardage, actually near a first down. Not going to have enough for it. It's going to be a second down and short. Boy, and that's going to be such a momentum shifter right there. Warren Mott comes out firing on all cylinders out of the halftime break, and you, you think, boy, they're going to get within a touchdown here at Dakota, and you wonder if certain things are starting to creep into the back of the Dakota Cougar players that, hey, this team's beaten us twice, you know, in the last two years, and for Warmont to not be able to cash in, and then Dakota comes out and gets a seven-yard play. It's a big drive for the Cougars as they could really kind of ice this one away. Solomon, a tough run up the middle. We'll see where they spot this thing, but it looks like he has enough for the first down. They place it right on the 30, and that's where the first down marker was. Fresh set of downs now for the Cougars. Under six minutes now to play in the third quarter. Dakota throughout the game has been able to maintain some drives and keep momentum going in their favor. The option there, Toko rolls out to his right, floats a pass out there off the hands of Lewalski, his first drop of the ball game. That's been a play that's been there for most of the night, once again trying to utilize the middle of the field. They had two drives of 13 plus plays one drive that took nearly six minutes off the clock back in that first quarter as we got Cougar down. Jerron Kelly, speedster out there for Dakota. Having a hard time getting up. Trainers will go out and look at him. Well, coming up next week, Brad, following this one, Warren Mott hosts Chippewa Valley. That'll be a tough game for them, especially with Chippewa Valley trailing big against Eisenhower here tonight. Eisenhower goes on the road at Romeo. That'll be a big game for them. And then Dakota will go on the road at Stevenson. So more big time Mac Red matchups next week. Marquee matchups seemingly every week. The Mac Red plays and... That's a cramp right yeah, there. It sure is, working <laughs> on that calf and hamstring there. 100%, that's stretching out those legs. I've been there, Brad, I, I know what that feels like. That When your leg cramps up and tightens up like that, and gosh, it just feels like your leg itself is 200 pounds. Hard to lift and have mobility, and he's gonna try to get up and walk this thing off. Who would have expected these warm temperatures in the middle of September? You gotta love it, but for football players, no amount of water beforehand can, can quite prepare you for these warm games and later on this ball game gets i'm sure there will be more even more cramping it was actually cooler at one of our games a couple weeks ago yeah, than true. it was tonight in, in week two it was it in was august it was chilly <laughs> it was chilly in jackets august, yeah. on a lot warmer here tonight in mid-september so it's second down and 10 now for dakota ball placed at the 30 yard line solomon in motion Fakes the handoff to him. Toko looking for somewhere to run, trying to get away. 
Going to get a face mask penalty against Warren Mott. Now some pushing and shoving. Don't think they're going to get a penalty late there for unsportsmanlike, but definitely Toko had his face mask pulled running through that line. Fogarty once again was the first marauder in the backfield. Nice job blocking him out of the way. Opened up a little bit of running room for Toko. It's a personal foul variety, so. 15 yards. I'm pretty sure that's gonna give him a first down, Brad. Unlike the last personal foul penalty. Which was half the distance half to the goal distance and the goal should have been an automatic first down. We'll have to consult the MHSAA rule book after the game, get some clarification on that call. First down and 10. Toko out of the gun. Solomon wants to get in motion. He'll take the handoff, cuts back inside. Picks up about four yards on the plate near midfield. Justin Solomon running the ball well here tonight for Dakota. Big Dakota. part of their offense. Dakota has to love the hand they've been dealt here in the second half. After making the stop defensively, they're just able to chew up all of this clock now and really gonna have the Marauders' backs against the wall. Four and a half minute mark of this third quarter. We talked about Mott maybe dug themselves too big of a hole going down 21 nothing. They'll hand the ball off again. This time it's number 20 into the game. Dawson Sloan gonna have a first down. Beautiful run. There's a lot of guys on that Warren Mott sideline that are asked to play both sides of the ball. They don't have the depth that Dakota has and lots of hands on hips. This defensive unit for Warren Mott has been on the field all night long. You can visually see from up here at the press box, Brad, looking down, the, the, the difference between Dakota's sideline and Warren Mott's and the amount of players that they, they have dressed here tonight. It's a war of attrition and right now, Dakota's just trying to wear them down. First down and 10 now from the 42 yard line into Warren Mott territory. And now we're gonna get a timeout. Toko from the sideline didn't like the personnel out there, didn't like the formation they were in, called the timeout. And that's the second one for Dakota, Brad. Remember they had to use one within the first couple minutes of the third quarter. Coach Bauer was unhappy that time that they had to burn one, but Dakota controlling things here. If they can continue to burn this clock down in the third quarter, maybe put some points up on the board. Could be an exclamation point on this game. Things don't get much easier for Warren Mott. You mentioned that matchup next week at home against Chippewa Valley. They can go on the road for two straight against Frazier and Romeo for ending the season the home game against Eisenhower and a very tough Mac White opponent in Gross Point South. So important to get that sixth victory oh. to make the playoffs for the seventh straight year for Warmont. They're gonna have to look to get them before the final two games. Those are gonna be brutal. Mont's made the playoffs, Jason, 10 out of the last 11 years. So really, they've really become a steady team within the Mac. Solomon trying to break to the outside. We're gonna get a holding call though. Look like behind the play that time, Richie Dunford held on to the defender trying to break Solomon free. Prior to this recent run of playoff appearances, 10 out of the last 11 years, Mott had only made the playoffs once in 14 years. Credit Coach Milanoff and his staff. They've done an excellent job over the last decade plus. I remember that playoff team. It was quarterback by Nick Thurman. Mr. Baseball in the state of Michigan was playing some minor league baseball as well. His brother was in the Blue Jays organization. Made it all the way up to the major league level. Nick didn't quite make it that far. First down here for Dakota. That flag moved them all the way back in their own territory. A little screen pass. Solomon catches another flag down. Goodness. Fatigue clearly starting to set in on both sides as we're now we're starting to see the penalties pick and up. Dakota's clapping. They're clapping. It must have been against Warren Mott. Let's see what the call is. Sometimes you wonder on those screen plays, 
A lot of times it's a hold against the offense, but it doesn't appear that's going to be the case here. A lot of times you maybe get some blocking downfield or. Incidental face masks perhaps on the defense, but let's see. You going to pick it up? Oh, I'm going to walk it up. We didn't get a call yet, so let's see what the official calls this thing. No indication yet, but there he comes. It's a personal foul face mask. So as Solomon was running, somebody grabbed his face mask to pull him down, and that was the call. Now they give him an automatic first down here. They haven't oh, moved the chains. That, well, it's I think the penalty first yardage short. moved him up. They're just short of a first down. So it'll be first and one. Pretty manageable <laughs> first down here. You don't see this too often. Toko takes it under center this time, hands it to Solomon. He's stuffed in the backfield. Boy, that front four got tremendous push. Led by number 53, Liam Fogarty. I said it was manageable. Now they're second down and three. Dakota testing out the short yardage group, trying to see if they can pick up yards that way, but they can pick up yards just by spreading them out as well. Got a dual threat quarterback in Mark Toko. Second down and three now. Ball placed at the, th at the 35 yard line. Toko fakes the handoff, bootleg out. Trying to shake a defender, he's gonna be taken down, no gain on the play. Good pursuit that time by Darius Willis. Curtis Hamilton also in on that tackle. So now after a first and one, Brad, they're looking at a third down and three. So this would be a huge stand for that Marauder defense. Pretty safe to assume at this point, Dakota's not able to get the first down. It will be four down territory. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. It's gonna be interesting to see what Mott dials up here. They've been burned a couple times on the blitz, that screen from the backfield's opened up and that seam right down the middle of the field's been available and now we get the encroachment penalty. Center was shoved down that time. Dakota's aiming at Warren Mott, you would assume, yeah, they're walking it off. It's gonna be a five yard encroachment. Enough for a first down, so, so that's, that's twice this yeah, game. Yeah, that's twice Toko's drawn the defense offside. Gives you a free set of downs, so that's a backbreaker there for the Mott defense. Work so hard and set yourself up in a third down situation just to jump off sides and give them a fresh set of downs. But they gotta recover here. Dakota has it first down at 10 now from the 30. Once Toko. again, Dakota hasn't thrown the ball at all in this drive and has taken the majority of the clock down. Austin Sloan once again on the run, takes it down to the 25. Five-minute-plus drive now for Dakota as they look to really ice this game away. I can't imagine Dakota, or check that, Warren Mott coming back from 21 points down in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Dakota missed a field goal. Could have had more points there. and if They are able to strike here with anything. Turn it into a three-possession game. Toko will throw for the first time. That time the walker off his hands, incomplete. Coverage on the outside there by Madison. It's gonna bring up third down now. Clock stops with a minute two left in the third. He had Walker out there, pass just a little high, and a little hot for, for him to handle. And Walker might have thought about running with that football before he brought it in completely. And also heard some footsteps. There's some decent coverage there by Madison. Madison wrapped him up and wisely let go after he realized Walker had not come down with that football. I don't want to get hit with a late hit penalty. Here we go, third down. Bootleg to the right. Got a man out there, complete. Going to be a first down. Pass complete to number 21. First time we've called out his name, Patrick Marola. And just a well-designed play there, a designed rollout. For Toko, a little drag route across the field. 
Well, you could just see the, the urgency for Dakota just moving like snails out there right now, just trying to take their time, methodically wear down more and Mott here in the third quarter. Walking up to the line now, Tilko under center. Takes the snap, turns, hands it off. Sloan trying this left side, cuts back in. Tripped up inside the five yard line, down to the three. Dakota will have it first and goal. Madison with the touchdown saving tackle there. A good cut back that time. That was actually Dustin Solomon. They went back to him on that carry. Both him and Sloan working the ground game here in the third. Demoralizing drive here for the Warren Mott defense as they've watched Dakota take nearly seven minutes off of this clock. They've run 12 offensive plays. First and goal now. Under center, they turn, hand it off, try the left side into the end zone. Touchdown, Dakota. Second rushing touchdown, third rushing touchdown for them tonight. Justin Solomon caps off a beautiful, beautiful drive for Dakota. They now lead it 27-7. Third touchdown of the game for Solomon. Two on the ground and one through the air. Second rushing touchdown of the night for him and big part of that offense. And that's always been Dakota's MO is they've usually had at least one running back that's carried the bulk of the load and then they utilize a few other <laughs> type of athletes in that backfield to fill in the gaps. But uh, a little uh, bit of botched snap there. Ooh, dangerous looking tackle from up here, but apparently it was clean. Oh, Janaka looked like he made it grab the back of the helmet to take down the kicker that time. Well, Dakota's extra point try is botched, so we stay 27-7 here with 3.6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You mentioned Dakota seemingly always has that one back. That's nice when you have a guy by the name of Kaiser Carlton back there, right? He was their running back for the past few seasons. Outstanding high school career for him. And now they have a couple running backs, but primarily on the ground. You see it's Dustin Solomon taking the bulk of the load. Dawson Sloan has had a few carries here tonight. They've run a couple sweeps around the outside with their receivers and utilizing Ronye Walker. But I know Coach Bauer, and all his years as the offensive coordinator here at Dakota, kind of that, or excuse me, the defensive coordinator here at Dakota. You, they know that if it's not broke, you don't fix it. So that running game has been working tonight for them primarily, and they wanted to kill some clock here in the third quarter, and they did it beautifully. Kaiser Carlton, a Eastern Michigan commit. Team that just beat Rutgers. And another kick that goes right into the end zone for a touchback. Warren Mott once again will start at their own 20. Check on his status. I assume he was redshirted. Eastern Michigan, a program that's coming back, Brad. They, as I mentioned, they bit, just beat Rutgers, and I guess a lot of argument over whether Rutgers is really a Big Ten team, but. 70-nothing <laughs> shellacking by Michigan last year might have proven a lot of naysayers that Rutgers wasn't quite ready for Big Ten play. And who knows what they're going to do this year, losing to that Eastern Michigan squad, and now and have to go up against some of the big boys in the East in the, in the Big Ten, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State. They're gonna have a tough schedule. Even Maryland's much improved this year. And DJ Dirk and the head coach at Maryland. They handed, or excuse me, quarterback keeper up the middle that time. You know your program's on. in trouble when your best players out of your state are going elsewhere. You look at players like Rashawn Gary and Peppers, New Jersey boys that aren't staying home and going to the State University there and, in New Jersey, not going to Rutgers, they're coming to schools like Michigan, you know you're in trouble. Last play of the third quarter. Got an injury, injury, but uh, that's the end of the third quarter. Stay with us. Dakota leads it 27-7. We'll be back in a few moments for the start of the fourth. Don't go away.
go. Here you go. All right. Give me your keys if you want another beer. Although parents may have good intentions when they allow teens to have a party in their home, permitting teens, even your own child, to drink alcohol is a big mistake. Don't allow underage drinking. It's illegal and can result in serious consequences. Parents who host parties where alcohol is served to minors lose the most. Welcome back here in Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt and Brad Fetters getting set for the start of the fourth and final quarter here between Dakota and Warren Mott. The Marauders have it trailing 27-7. They'll have it second down and six. An injury right before that end of the third quarter, Brad, was Alex Collins, a defensive lineman slash offensive lineman. They hand it off, trying to get to the outside that time. Not going to happen is number 20. That's Ojanaka. Great pursuit that time. Solomon on defense doing it all tonight. Two-way player for Dakota, and he's been the star of tonight's show. He knows how to run the ball, and he knows how to stop the run, apparently. Uh, who better to get after a running back than the fellow running back, yeah, he right? He knows which he's direction you're going to go. Snip that play out well. So a loss brings up third down and nine, and this is a big play for Warren Mott. And they have to find a way to keep the offense on the field, down 21 points. They know Dakota is able to churn up a lot of yards and a lot of time. You seemingly can't imagine Mott will get the ball back too many times. Down three scores, every possession counts from here on out, and now we're going to get a timeout from Coach Milano First the Marauders sideline. Yeah, first one for them. Dakota has burned a couple timeouts, but with a comfortable 20-point lead. And Dakota defense really has stepped up here tonight for giving up 42 points to Eisenhower. I can't imagine many defenses are going to stop that attack this season as Eisenhower looks like a well-oiled machine with that senior quarterback, Whitworth, back there. They're uh, going to be tough to knock off this year. Yeah, they, they are the real deal. And you know, we talked about them at the beginning of the year as being one of the top teams in the MAC Red. They're up big, uh, at least at halftime, the last check, where they yeah, were well, up by three scores on Chippewa Valley, a team who hoped to compete with Eisenhower for the MAC Red. So, Let's see if we can get you an update here. Third down and nine here for Warren Mountain out of the timeout. Let's see what they come up with. Option play. Back to throw it. Doobie under pressure. He's going to go down. Sacked back at the 15 yard line. Dustin Solomon again, Brad, in on that sack. So now Warren Mock going to be forced to punt from deep in their own territory. And I hate to say it, but I know there's 10.40 left to go in this ball game. That might be a dagger for Warren Mott. Dakota will get the ball back, and they can methodically wind this clock down some more. And you wonder if that uh, personal foul, horse collar tackle would have went the other way and would have given them an extra set of downs if the momentum would have shifted in this football game because it appeared Warren Mott was knocking on the door. That would have been a big touchdown right out of the halftime gates. It would have trimmed the lead down to 21-14. They have to settle for a field goal attempt. They miss it short. And then Dakota just goes down and punches them right back in the mouth and is seemingly ice this football game away. Well, after that punt, Dakota will have excellent field position as actually a penalty on that, on that punt moves them all the way up. Dakota would have had the ball inside Warren Mott territory regardless, but goodness, they moved the ball all the way up to the 31 yard line. And that's where Dakota will start. 10-21 left to go in the ball game. Actually, after that penalty, Brad, it's Warren Mott's ball. Warren Mott out on the field. They get a first down. So personal on that foul punt, call. on that punt, the personal foul call cost them enough yardage. Warren Mott gets the ball back. So stand by. Warren Mott still with some life. Huge play there. Well, we saw the punt. I didn't necessarily see the flag. It must have come down. 
behind the play, you know, almost maybe like a roughing the kicker or something. And I was watching the, the, the punt over here on this side and Ronnie Walker called for a fair catch at the 48. Snap there on that run will bring up a third down for the Marauders. So seemingly new life here for Warren Mott. See if they can take advantage of it. But a big third down upcoming. Got to be four down territory here. You can't imagine they will punt. If they're unable to get the first down here. Dakota will bring a four man rush. Now Solomon backs off. We'll drop back off into coverage. Three down linemen. Out of the gun, Doobie. Back to throws, got time. Pass complete out there to Hamilton. Trying to shake free the defense. Just bottles them up. Trayvon Madison, excuse me, with that catch, number three. Well, here we go. Play the game. Warren Mott has to convert. Fourth down and a long five yards. Have to get it all the way up to the 41 yard line. Well, maybe they'll try to draw Dakota offsides here. That one. It's worked twice for them. Out of the gun, Doobie. Looking to throw it. Fires to his left. Pass caught. Ooh, that's going to be close. Where are they going to mark it? It looks like it's going to be enough for a first down. Boy, what a catch right there by Trayvon Madison. He nearly had that ball go right through his hands. And terrific. Strong enough to grip it. Terrific recognition of realizing where he needed to be on the football field in order to get a first down. There's no chains on this near side of the field. So good recognition to get to the number, turned around, ball is right there. A terrific catch. And a first down for Warren Mott. Doobie put some steam on that one too. That one, if that one goes through his hands, it's turnover on downs. So that's a big play thus far for Mott. Now they'll try one deep. Got a man out there, incomplete. Good coverage out there in the secondary by number four, Karan Rozier. Stayed with him step for step. Terrific job of not grabbing jersey or not interfering. You gotta wonder how many more big plays they're gonna go for. They almost have to because Time becoming a factor. They're yeah. going to have to try to get some points up on the board quickly. Onside kick, or just can't imagine that we want Dakota to have the football the way Dakota has been running it here today. Solomon coming on a blitz. Oh, Quarterback boy. option. Boy, he kind of broke up that play in the backfield, and Doobie had to just scramble outside and not sure if he got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that play got busted up early, and Doobie doing a decent amount of of work there just to get one yard out of it. Boy, Solomon came unblocked. I was watching him on this near side. Unblocked, got in that backfield. By the time they picked him up, they were trying to do that option exchange that time, and Doobie, all he could do was try to bounce to the outside and not quick enough to get there. It's a beautiful defensive play right there by, by Solomon. With as similar as these two offenses are, you're surprised. You don't see more busted plays where the defense is able to recognize what the offense is doing. You know, you got to really pay attention to that backside defensive end or linebacker, and that was uh, Solomon that time. If he commits, you keep it. And 7.48 left to go. Now they put some time back on the clock now, 7.57. Solomon has just been outstanding. Now he's lined up up against the wide receiver. Now he'll, <laughs> he'll scoot Come back down. inside. <laughs> they pick him up that time, but this time Doobie yeah. flushed out, trying to make something happen. Yeah. He goes down. Solomon's going to make the tackle again. <laughs> also, LJ Hassel, number 44. He's been chasing him around all night. Solomon side to side, utilizing that speed. Dakota's defense coming up big here in the second half. Warren Mott gonna have to go for it here, fourth and long. You gotta think this is gonna be some sort of a passing down, but. Yep, they went know. to Mart Madison last time, who's at the bottom of your screen. And 
course, you got a dual threat quarterback in Jake Duby, so you're not sure where they're going to go here. And Duby's only completed a handful of passes. Jailbreak rush, interception. Intercepted, and we're going the other way. It's going to be a pick six. Touchdown, Dakota. Brendan Meesh just turned around. The ball was right there, and he had nobody behind him. The only one that could have stopped him was Duby, and he wasn't going to catch him. Dakota scores a defensive touchdown with 6.55 left to go. Pretty much put the final nail in the coffin of Warren Mott. They lead it 33-7. Not much on fourth down there. Duby knew where he wanted to go. He kind of telegraphed the pass, and Meesh was just right there playing the passing lane and perfectly done. Now Dakota will just kick an extra point here and not try to go for two. Extra point is up, and it is good. Dakota leads it 34-7. So a good showing tonight, pretty much from beginning to end for this Dakota team, Brad. You can kind of just sense that they all matched Warren Mott here tonight in a lot of the aspects of the game. And yeah, this is a Dakota unit that really came out firing on all cylinders. You could tell they were motivated. They didn't want to fall the 0-2 in the MAC red, and they wanted to take that bitter taste out of their mouth after losing two straight to this Warren Mott team. Really carried a lot of that momentum with that 60 nothing win over Lance Cruz in the play here tonight. And First three drives of this game resulted in touchdowns. A 21 nothing lead really demoralizing to Warren Mott and they weren't able to climb back into this ball game. Mott had their chance though. First drive of the third quarter. Couldn't get the ball in, they had to settle for that field goal. That was really the turning point here tonight. It's been they all the since. Settle, they had to settle for a field goal try. They even missed it. So right. they came away with nothing on that drive. And that I, you said it moments after that happened. You said just what a change in the game now that that might cause. Uh, clearly took the air out of the sails of Warren Ma at that, at that point. Dakota then proceeded to run off a, a, a drive that sustained for more than seven minutes. And Warren Ma just hasn't been able to recover. So they kick it off to him, uh, taking at the two yard line is James Murray, just trying to make anything happen up to the 30 yard line. Nice return, but Warren Mott, maybe too much work to do, not enough time here at this point. It's gonna be back to the drawing board as you, you take on Chippewa Valley next week. It's going to be a tough game for Warren Mott. And it's going to be a Chippewa Valley team that more than likely will be coming off a loss to Eisenhower. So both of those teams will be one and one along with Dakota. So a log jam now in second place in the MAC Red as everybody's going to be chasing after Eisenhower. Well, Eisenhower with their talent and obviously Guardy going up against two of the better teams perhaps in the MAC Red, and they're going to be 2-0 and in those games. You know, you got to think that they may be looking at a 5-0 and record once again in the MAC Red. For this Dakota team to come out and have a game like this, if they're able to sustain things throughout the, their MAC Red schedule, a 4-1 and in the MAC Red obviously is not going to win you the title, but you're going you're gonna to put yourself in a good position in the postseason and have some maybe some home playoff games, depending on if you end up in the same district as Eisenhower. You might be... Uh, looking at perhaps maybe challenging for a district championship as well. So still lots to play for throughout the year. And Eisenhower team making it all the way to the state semifinals last season. We've got a big run here for Warren Mott. Dakota's defense softens a little bit. Beautiful run that time by Trevon Madison. Or no, excuse me, Curtis Hamilton, number two. A little speedy running back. Got all the way into the Dakota territory. Big run there. Well. Latest update that I have, Jason, is 
Eisenhower is leading Chippewa Valley 35-21 at the end of the third quarter. Still a, still a game. So still a ball game there, down 14 points. So that one's not over yet. They were up, they were up by three scores at halftime, so seemingly was that Eisenhower was running away with that game. Second down and about four yards. They try it again once more with Hamilton. He's stuffed at the line. By number eight, Brendan Meesh, who had the pick six. This is a defensive unit here, Jason. I've been really impressed with here tonight for Dakota. Is they're really going to improve their numbers after giving up 24 and, and 42 against Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Eisenhower, but a little wildcat offense perhaps now is Trayvon Madison back in that quarterback position. Took the low snap, then faked the handoff and ran it up. So trying to change things up and do be out of the game now at this point. So Trayvon Madison is your quarterback. Takes a weapon away from your receiving core, but puts more, maybe more of a threat in the, in the back position. Yeah, the quarterback position. They hand it off inside. Curtis, Curtis Hamilton. Yeah, Curtis Hamilton rushing hard up the middle. They turned to Hamilton in the second half. They started out well with him rushing the football. Just couldn't get points on the board. And now as we approach four minutes left to go in the ball game. They try that right side and another nice tackle by Mish bottling up Hamilton. Hamilton couldn't shake Mish there and clock under four minutes now. And This is going to be a nice win for Dakota. As we mentioned, they go on the road next week at Stevenson. Inside handoff once again. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Warren Mott. Curtis Hamilton made a nice adjustment cut back to the inside. And this one's not over yet. Good vision that time. Made a nice cut back inside, and that's what got him the open space. It was 34-13, extra point upcoming. Kick is up, and it is good. 34-14 our score, back to a 20-point game. And now Dakota Going to have to anticipate maybe an onside kick here. Yep, going to have to bring out the hands unit. And Warren Mott's going to have to come up with their best onside kick play. You know, Brad, I was talking about next week, Dakota at Stevenson. And, you know, even if Stevenson is down, and you look at games on paper. Of course, we're allowed to do that. Coaches yeah, aren't allowed to do that. Coaches will never do that. They'll never do that, but we can. You know, you look at that game, Dakota's clearly going to be a favorite in that game to win. But those road games, sometimes they play fits with this Cougar team. You see them go to Stevenson, go to Romeo, go to Warren Mott, and they just lay an egg. And it just, those are the type of games that they're going to have to get over the hump year after year. If they Like with this team, they're going to have to put it all together and go to Stevenson and win. Later in the year, they go at Romeo. That's always a tough place yeah. to play. Those are the games that you're going to have to, to come up big. And, of course, your rival Chippewa Valley, they still got them on the schedule later in the year as well. And matchup with Romeo, for whatever reason, teams go to Romeo in, in seemingly all sports. It doesn't matter, but especially in football and basketball, they go up to Romeo and just find ways to lose games. And don't forget that's a Romeo team that's, that's made the uh, state semifinals. They won a state title a couple years ago. So nothing is easy in the MAC Red, that's for sure. So you, you count your blessings when you can pick up a win in league. I'm going to kick this one straight up bounds. So that's, uh, that's not what you want. 
So they didn't go for an onside kick. I think they were looking for maybe a little squib or maybe the kicker caught too much of the ball and kicked it too far instead of trying to kick it straight up in the air. Either way, it didn't work. And you wonder if he was just kind of was picking a spot somewhere between the 20 and 25 and hoping the ball would land and you could kind of maybe get a rugby scrum in there and maybe come away with the ball or have it hit one of the up men, but he kicked it straight out of bounds. So Dakota will take over at the 35 yard line. We'll look to put the finishing touches here on their first Mac Red win of the season. Still got the starters out there right now. Toko under center. They're gonna just look to run this thing out if they can. They'll turn, hand it off. Oh, big hit. Dawson Sloan spun around. Got up to the 39 yard line before a big hit. Khalil Brown, the defensive lineman. Turned him into a human top that time as he <laughs> spun around real quick. Looked like Lockett, Julian Lockett was involved as well. Number 15 from that linebacking position came up and lowered the shoulder. This is a game that Dakota desperately needed. When they looked like they were desperate, they played like it. And it's probably as good a game that I've seen Dakota play over the years. No matter what team they had, this was just a well-played game from beginning to end. Offensively, defensively, special teams. Statement victory. Another tough run, gonna have a first down. The pile still moving. So you take a look at that result from that Eisenhower game in week two and Dakota goes down 42 to 16. You I mean, kind of wonder, what it, what is this Dakota team made of? You know, are they gonna be able to compete in the MAC Red? Are they gonna finish near the bottom of the pile? But I think they've answered all the critics here tonight and have really thumped Warren Mott. They still got, like we mentioned, a couple tough games on their schedule. Still looking at a tough one against Chippewa Valley and then at Romeo later in the year. Got Stevenson next week, so got a chance to, if they win out, they'll go four and one in the Mac Red, which is outstanding, but unless Eisenhower drops one somewhere, you're gonna be looking at a, a second place finish. A couple yard pickup there on that run as this clock just continues to roll down. For Warren Mott, it's gonna be really important for them to keep that playoff streak alive. Six straight years, looking to make it seven years Starting out the season three and one, more than likely. I think it's safe to say with 90 seconds left. So tough game next week at home against Chippewa Valley. For a couple road games, you gotta beat Frazier and you gotta beat Gross Point South. Your two crossover games, that gives you five. And then you gotta pick off either Chippewa Valley, Romeo, or Ike. And, or you win five games and hope there's not enough teams that automatically qualify. Because that schedule, you would, you would assume they would get in. Most, rack, most Mac Red teams, if they get to five wins, they generally get in only because there's there's hardly ever enough they, they get in with that six win total. And if you end up with five wins and you're a Mac Red team against a team out of the Mac white or blue that's a five win team in, in D1, then uh, clearly you're gonna get the advantage based on strength of schedule and, and playoff points, which is how they do things. Coming up on 30 seconds to play. This is pretty much it. Now we're going to get a false start penalty, but we'll just kind of wrap things up here, Brad. Yeah. Your overall assessment oh, of tonight's I, game. I mean, Dustin Solomon had one heck of a game here for Dakota. Three touchdowns offensively, but seemingly all over the football field defensively from that linebacking position. And you just got to keep going back to that start for Dakota. Their first three possessions of this game, they really carried the energy of this field here tonight from that ceremony prior to the start of the game of the 2007 state title team and they came out and they punched Warren Mott getting up 21 nothing and and Mott really seemingly didn't have an answer for them in the first half and a terrific game here for Dakota and a game they desperately needed in order to go one and one in Mac Red play. Well they take a knee on a third down play and that's how this one will end. Final score Dakota wins it 34-14 outstanding game from beginning to end. We thank you so much for watching here on Macomb Township Government Access. For Brad Fetters and the rest of our crew here, 
We thank you once again for watching. Dakota wins at 34-14. So long.